Hey guys, it's the Raw Wrap Up Morning After Edition again, of course, because I got a little dozy during the main event. Uh, I figured it wasn't going to be a great recording time for us, but it's good to uh, get in here, talk to you a little bit about what happened Monday Night Raw. First of all, the Kevin Owens and Jericho show is my favorite show of all time still. Uh, the guys uh, are, are still owning Raw. I mean, hell, they had me howling just on the uh, uh, Raw talk after the pay-per-view the night before. And uh, I'm loving everything that they're doing uh, here uh, before I doze off. Uh, <laughs> as opposed, you know, in, 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 in general, uh, with, uh, you know, rope, making Roman Reigns a little bit interesting and, uh, and, and pushing that forward. Enzo and Cass, amazing. Coming out as a Toy Story, uh, pulling the string, great stuff. By the way, we do have a side thing where um, I'm trying to get DJ Lunchbox to to read Enzo transcripts in a British accent, and uh, you can help that too by giving. I think it comes to a dollar twenty six uh, pounds to cut. <laughs> pounds to uh, a dollar conversion over patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show to entice him to do that for you guys out there uh so so look out for that but no enzo and cast the trick or treat trick or street fight uh was amazing it, they do this every year guys i mean i i was uh thinking back to when cesaro had a pumpkin awkwardly on his head that he had to hold on and it looks like uh looks like gallows uh kind of uh Continued the tradition, didn't he, uh, with that? But no, it was, it was a lot of fun. It, it's the holiday edition. Um, I thought that was just just great stuff to start out raw. Uh, we uh, of course we had our little teaser of the uh, Shield reunion sort of thing. Um, I think it's hopefully going to be a little bit more interesting than just the reunion there. Uh, as we saw with a little bit of a stare down, though. I don't know. This is when the eyelids were getting a little heavy for me last night. It's hard to get through Raw, guys. Raw is real good, but it's hard to get through Raw, guys. Cruiserweights represented. Uh, we had a six-man tag. I don't know. I want to not like the, the six-man tags that they keep throwing these guys in. Because I feel like you know we're just throwing people out there, right? But these guys are delivering with fun six-man tags every time this happens. And... and, and it's not like a lot of the same combinations, more or less, right? But it's a nice way to keep those guys out there. I, I don't know. It, it feels like a shoehorn kind of thing. But we are getting still. I think last night. I think for or I think for the pay per view that as a kickoff was perfect to get the crowd going as a place order kind of thing. But then having it uh, kind of the same thing the next night. I think it was just the tag on the on the pre preview show or the pre show. But to have a same on the Raw, and of course they really recycle things. I thought we'd see less of this since we only have one show a week. But it, it still feels like it's happening. They still kind of do some carryover from the pay-per-views. We had a, a Kendrick Perkins rematch, um, it, it's which I guess is okay. So we'll see what's going on there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with what they're doing with the Cruiserweights. Um, some people have been happy with what's happening in the ring, not so happy with where... They're going with stories and stuff like that, and I feel like, well, I feel like we're kind of getting that uh, with the T.J. Perkins and and Kendrick thing, and we're still learning um, exactly where everybody else is going to fit. Uh, just so tremendous, the guys that that we've seen uh, or worked with over the years with with our work with uh, IWC and the other promotions, guys like uh, Anthony Nice, Lince Dorado, uh, you know, guys like that, getting featured prominently uh, week to week here on raw is pretty cool and and probably would it, it take out the cruiserweights and i think raw is going to be a generally a longer show for you to get through in the long run so i i think i think they've got a nice spot there uh and uh, they should keep going so what the hell else happened on raw last night beast broken enough no that's another podcast uh braun Strowman wins the battle royal good for him we still have some fun stuff happening with cesaro and sheamus don't never never break up guys never break up you guys still, I think they still have a title rematch. Uh, costume of the night goes to the New Day, who all three are one person. You see what happened there? Papa Shango, Godfather, comma. I know only one of them got into the, uh, into the uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, myself, I started looking up Papa Shango matches and was watching Papa Shango and Bret Hart from uh, Saturday Night's Main Event in the 90s. 
uh, in at, on commercial breaks during Raw. That's a nice thing. I, I should really kind of turn that into some of my uh, Monday, Night Raw, Monday Night Raw method is to just pull up classic matches to watch during the commercial breaks. Then Raw doesn't end. It'd be kind of nice. We also have a Raw Survivor Series team starting to formulate Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and of course Jericho and Kevin Owens. I would not be surprised if we get some upheaval in that. I would not be surprised. Where's Seth? Where's Seth? Is Seth going to be the the other guy? Is Seth going to be replacing Jericho for some reason? I don't know. Uh, I kind of and, and let us know uh, on the at Mayhem Show or comments if you're uh, uh, watching this on YouTube or on the Facebook. Who do you who do you want in that four spot? Who needs to be in that four spot there for the Raw Survivor Series? And of course. Uh, many of you this evening, uh, SmackDown will find out what the SmackDown team looks like as Daniel Bryan is scheduled to let us know. So, and I went to screensaver as I'm shooting this. This is weird. Uh, so, uh, other than that, uh, from everything I'm recalling from Raw last night, and really, Goldberg, Goldberg at the beginning was pretty forgettable. You didn't knew you knew you knew Brock wasn't there. There's a tweet that popped up as I'm watching that says they're not wasting one of Brock's dates on this, um, and and these guys can't touch until Survivor Series. That, that'd be crazy. Uh, they might have a, a face off the week before or something. That's it. So all all together, I want to give. Geez, I can't I can't think of much that I hated last night. So Nia Jax Bailey, I'm liking that. I think that's a nice nice kind of push forward. I like the, uh, you know, you got to prove yourself against somebody that's on my Survivor Series team with Nia Jax. Uh, Bailey moving forward with that stuff. Um, still kind of doing the work and hurt thing. Everybody Charlotte takes on has to be injured, I guess. So we'll see where that goes. But good to see uh, Bailey's the next one to kind of step up there. So, anyways, I'll give Raw a standard uh, two hours, 45 minutes. Probably because I could have done without half of the Goldberg thing in the long run. Again, nothing nothing I can think of really stuck out the jokes. The worst thing was uh, uh, R-Truth and Goldberg in the haunted house. Sure. That's right. I even liked uh, Sheamus and Cesaro against the Shining Stars. I thought there was something about you there. So let us know what you thought, how much of Raw was watchable, what did you think of Raw. Comments on here, wherever this may be, or hit us up at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com um, on Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to have one of the guys from the Two Man Power Trip podcast joining us, and we hope you do too. Keep it raw, guys.